No, I'm not in Europe. I'm at the National Cathedral in Northwest DC, right in the neighborhood of today's mural. So I love the architecture of this place and I wanted to bring this old school style into the new. Years ago, there's a huge earthquake. This place is still rebuilding from it. And so I wanted to create a sense of movement from the street with a mural, but that also referenced a little bit of that shaking. So with my mural's representation, it's a little bit of a slant. We're gonna take a look at some of the products and processes we use in making a mural. Whether you're someone painting a mural or someone paying for one, you're gonna have a better idea of what goes into a project like this. Hey guys, welcome to Macomb Street near the Smithsonian National Zoo. We've got a fun piece here, going with a little bit of a vintage style because this is an older historic neighborhood. Well, pretty much every neighborhood in DC is historic. But this one's a little bit different than we normally do. We use pretty much every tool we can think of, spray paint, brush, tape, to create a layered vintage kind of piece. We'll break it down for you back at the shop, the different techniques we use piece by piece. But right now, I've got to wrap it up on the wall. So like most murals, this one starts with a blank wall. Now keeping the background wall color the same as the front of the building for continuity, you always want to make sure that your paint is fresh before you layer your design over top. Next, I dug up some old news clippings from the neighborhood over the years. I referenced different businesses and cool things that had happened here. I collage those together in Photoshop. Now with getting a project onto a wall, there's two main techniques. One is the grid system and the other is a projector. In this situation, I used a projector because I had all these angles and the fonts were a little bit challenging to use a grid. But normally this kind of wall would have been perfect for that because the brick lines create that natural grid. The challenge with the projector is that you do have to do it at night and you do also have to have power. So next, you wanna make sure your colors work really well together and that they also work well with the context around. I wanted to play into that antique palette so I did some muted tones. Now when it comes to sharp lines, I always use frog tape. This product is amazing. It allows you to get super sharp lines on rough surfaces like brick. It holds to the brick for days if you need to leave it up overnight. And then you could fill it in with spray paints, brush, or bucket paint. This stuff is really a secret weapon. Next, we bring in some brushes to fill in some of the areas where we wanted it to capture that faded magazine feel. Brushes are awesome because you can water down the acrylic. These paint pens create a variety of dotting, dashing, drawing techniques. It adds a little bit of personality into the sections. It gives it that old printed quality. My favorite, I use this painter's brush grip to hold my pens and brushes. It allows me to draw on the wall without having to get on the ladder so I can see the piece from a distance. This is something you really have to have in your arsenal. And that's actually what I'm doing today. I'm filling in the spot where this sign used to be and putting in some bagels. And you can see I don't need a projector for this. I'm just kind of going off with the rendering. But I use this collapsible ladder. It helps me get around the city. I also use these collapsible cones. You have to make it super obvious where you're working because people will totally just park like right in the middle of your job site. They'll come and take a smoke break underneath your ladder. Really so much crazy stuff can happen even while you're sitting there working on it. This is an easy way to keep you safe and keep your work safe while you're on it. And finally, don't forget to sign your work. The city gave us this plaque to put up. People want to know where things come from. They want to know the story behind it, who did it. And so putting your name gives them a clue to find out more about you and find out more about your design. The last piece of tape. Oh. Are we done? So thanks for tuning in. I'm Aaron Scales, and this is Creative Capital. See you next week.